Welcome back to Pass It, buddy. Today, we're going to talk about... I forgot what we were going to talk about. <laughs> when, when is the... Uh, shoot, I forgot. Oh, there when we go. Okay, to today, we're going to talk about when is the best time to buy a house. And we're going to look at it from two perspectives today. I know we always talk about investing in real estate, but today, I'm going to bring it... I mean, Alex, we can still talk about the investment side, but uh, I'm going to bring it from a home buyer side. Uh, what's the best time? But with all that being said, Alex, what what are you view? And I know you just started getting to the home buying space. Uh, what do you view is the best time to buy a house? Um, now, uh, I think the best time to buy a house is when you when the market is advantageous to you as a buyer, where you can take advantage of downturns in the situation that the market is in and get a better offer or make a better offer um, towards the seller. Um, in an environment like we saw maybe like in 2021, 2020, early 2022, uh, where, you know, houses were just flying off the shelf. It was difficult for mm-hmm. buyers because, you know, they can make an offer, but then someone comes and outbids them by 30 grand. And, you know, so you don't want to be overpaying for a house. You always want to try and get a deal. All right, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play devil's advocate with you. I'm playing devil's advocate with you. Okay. I'm gonna go with. All right. This is this is for home buyers. So somebody looking to get into their first home. Somebody looking to get a home for their family. It depends, and what I mean by it depends is how long you want. How long do you plan on living in the house? If you only plan on living in the house three years, then. Timing the housing market is of importance. If you plan on being there, I mean, I know everybody talk about starter homes, move up homes, damn all that. If you plan on being there 10 years plus, then honestly, then this is, of course, my view on it, and I take that wholeheartedly. There is no time, there is no bad time to buy a house. So, Alex, let's use your point there. Uh, when interest rates was low and houses was flying. Yeah, do you have to do more work? Yeah, do you got to scour the MLS? Do you got to be more aggressive to get a house at a lower interest rate and the monthly mortgage payments that you're going to be paying is way less than rent payments to be paid? That is a good time for people to buy a house. Even though it's more hectic, I'm not going to lie, it's more hectic, that's a good time for people to buy a house. If you get into an environment like we are in now, and right now we're talking uh, the first quarter of 2023, where the interest rates are higher. Now the interest rates are higher, but now you don't have all the hustle and bustle of everybody outbidding everybody. Now, I mean, like in probably another video we talk about, you getting to put in disrespectful offers, getting a way lower price than you'll get anywhere else. So being able to grab the house now and then hold on to it for a while, of course, grabbing the house now at the highest higher interest rate level, make sure you can still afford the payments and of course, underwriting to make sure that Get the house now and then later down the road, don't do, I mean, if you need a cash out refi, that's fine, but just refi to get a lower interest rate just to bring your payment down. But now you got a house that costs you less and then now you got a lower payment in the future. So I believe all it's always a good time to buy real estate because there's never going to be a time, nobody's going to call you, your uncle, cousin, brother, sister, or your daddy's side who's a real estate agent who ain't got a house, ain't going to call and tell you, oh, it's the best time to buy a house now. If somebody calling you, Telling you the best time to buy houses now, you're in competition with everybody else. So back in 2020, 2021, early 2022, people couldn't, I mean, houses were staying on the market literally hours and flying off the shelf. People who never bought a house first time home buyers, they either went and overbid it for pro- properties and stuff like that. And it ruined the home buying experience for, you know, those people. Especially new home buyers, first time home buyers, and things like that. Now you can sit there, do walkthroughs, do your due diligence, check out the neighborhoods, check out the school district. Before it was, hey, buy it and uh, let's hope for the best. So there's always an opportunity somewhere. You just got to find the opportunity. And then I'll come back with another one, Alex. What you got? Yeah, um, that makes sense. I mean, for a home buyer, it's, I guess, like you have to think about it more. Are you going to be there for, because if you're going to be there for like the rest of your life, it really doesn't matter what you pay for the house. Because yep. you know? it in the end, it's just a home. Um, yep. So 
you know, I, yeah, as an, or if, if you are only going to be there and maybe like you're moving around for work and you're only going to be there for a year to three years or something, then maybe, yeah, it's better um, to try and get a better deal or something like that. But I mean, I can, I can tell you my first home, it was more of an emotional process. That was before I learned everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so like, my perspective on it has changed now. Um, especially like, I think if we were ever to buy, uh, like, uh, like say we moved to another state and we were, or moved to a different whole different area and we were like buying another home. I think learning the, you know, how real estate works, um, can help you as a buyer to get a better deal even if you are only going to be there short term. Um, but, but yeah, as a home buyer, I mean, people care about, you know, how close are the schools? How close is it to work? Um, you know, how is the area or, you know, what features does it have in a house? So it's totally different when you're buying as an investor. It's just like, you know, how many beds, how many baths, how much rent can I get? So, you know, it's, it's totally different but I see your perspective for sure. Makes sense. And the other point I want to bring up, and this is going out to new home buyers. Some forget new home buyers. It's going out to new home buyers also, but it's going out to people who think they know what they're doing in the, in the housing market and they keep buying, you know, moving their family, to different houses. And we just talking about calendar, calendar time, the best times to negotiate pricing on a house is between September and March. And there's a reason why. The reason why is most people don't want to move school districts when they have kids. They don't want to deal with the headache or the perceived headache. So if you want to get a deal on a house or something like that, the best, most advantageous time is to do it, especially when 2003, you know, higher interest rates and things like that. But historically, I'm not just talking about 2023, I'm talking about historically, the best time to do is between September and March, because that is when kids are locked into school. I mean, some, some you know, start starting in like April, that's when the home buy, they call it the spring home buying season. But all the time in between that, houses are staying on the market longer. You can negotiate down on prices and you can get better deals. But the thing is, to get those better deals, you got to be willing to do stuff that other people are not willing to do. You got to be willing to, i.e., change your kid's school district in the middle of a term. You have to be willing to uh, deal with, depending on where you live at, deal with the elements and stuff like that to go move and stuff in the middle of winter and stuff like that. But those are the best times to buy a house if you're looking to negotiate a deal or get a lower price. Yeah. I don't have experience with buying during... Well, maybe I do actually, but, <laughs> maybe, yeah. but, uh, yeah, I can see that. I mean, it makes sense. Um, uh, that, that would be the best time, especially, you know, lower competition. You can put in better offers if you're going to. So. And usually, and usually homes are still sitting on the market in September through March. They're either homes that didn't sell during the spring buying season or, the seller is distressed and they got to hurry up and get out of the property, which all set up for opportunities for you as a buyer to go deal with, you know, negotiating down pricing and getting exactly what you want in the district that you want. But you have to be diligent. You can't sit there and just depend on, oh, I hired a real estate agent. And you think that real estate agent is 100 percent working for you. Remember, the real estate agent has contracts with everybody. So they're working for everybody. You have to go out there and do your due diligence and go check the MLS. You know, it's, I mean, back in the 80s and stuff, only the real estate agent had the MLS. Or if you seen somebody with a for sale sign, when you walk in and driving through the neighborhood, that's the only time you've seen it. But now with all the technology we have, we got so many uh, home selling platforms, the Zillow's, the Red Fins, uh, and things of that nature, Open Door and all that stuff. That stuff, it gives you no excuse on why you can't go do the work also in conjunction with the real estate agent to find a good property and make it happen. Yep, exactly. Well, guys, with all that being said, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.